Ephesians chapter number 6. Ephesians chapter number 6. If you were not in Sunday school this morning, uh, I made the announcement. We preached or taught on the warfare prayer this morning. And many of you uh, through the years have become accustomed to that prayer. We've given it to many people, some of our older church members. Uh, older church members that has been here the longest and uh, it is a great tool uh, to be able to get a hold of God and to be able to get a hold of God with these prayers uh, but also the whole armor of God is something I've mentioned maybe uh, several times here in the church through the years and I've preached on this passage at least two or three times since we've started but this is something that needs to be revisited about every three four years and I looked, I think last time I told on this was the 2015, and uh, we do have new people here, and it's always good for each of us to get something from it, and it's never going to be the same with me because I just don't write notes like that, uh, but we want the Lord to help us today, and so we're going to preach on the armor of God, and it's probably going to be a two-part message, so I'll give you the first part today, and then uh, next Sunday night I'll finish it up. Um, look at verse number 10 of Ephesians chapter number 6. Now, I want you to understand that the Apostle Paul is writing the book of Ephesians to the, to the church at Ephesus, and he's trying to help them in many different ways. Many ways, Ephesians mirrors the book of Coloss Colossians. Many of the things that are said are said in both of them, but this is not said. And there's a spiritual war going on at this point in time everywhere, but Paul was writing to the Ephesian church to help them to understand some things. And he tells them in verse number 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, and against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, Take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand, may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on a breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparations of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God once again. I'm glad that this church is founded and built upon the Word of God. I pray that you would help us to stand upon the Word of God. And Lord, I pray the Word of God would help us today as we look into this and understand a little bit more about the armor of God and why you gave us the armor of God, most importantly, today. Help us now in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. As I look back on the road I've traveled I see so many times He's carried me through If there's one thing that I've learned in my life My Redeemer is faithful and true my Redeemer is faithful and true. Everything He has said He would do. And every morning His mercies are new. My Redeemer is faithful and true. My heart rejoices when I read the promise There is a place I am preparing for you I know someday I'll see my Lord face to face 
Because my Redeemer is faithful and true. My Redeemer is faithful and true. Everything He has said He will do. And every morning His mercies are new. My Redeemer is faithful and true. And in every situation He has proved His love for me. When I lack the understanding, He gives more grace to me. My Redeemer is faithful and true. And everything He has said, He will do. And every morning, His mercies are new. My Redeemer is faithful and true. And every morning His mercies are new. My Redeemer is faithful and true. Good stuff. Yeah, it's real good. Uh, several years ago, well, several years ago, it's more than several now. Back in, I believe, in 2003, Brother Weedo came to church and he preached on the whole armor of God in our church where, where we were at. And he brought out a uh, I don't know if you've ever seen, Brother Cordell's seen him. Uh, there's a mask that a, a welder will use to weld with, and it will slide down in front of his face. And Brother Weedo brought out a, a, a uh, breastplate-type deal that catchers wear in, the, in, the, in, uh, in uh, Major League Baseball. They sit behind the plate. The pitcher throws in the ball. They have a vest on. And they brought out the shin guards, <laughs> and he brought out these boots, and he brought out a big old belt. And he preached on the whole armor of God, and he just kept putting this stuff on as he preached. And, man, it made an impact in my life. I still remember that message. I've never done that. Um, uh, you know, I've, 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 I've thought about it many times and just never done the, the, the whole illustration of it. But, you know, Brother Weedo said this. He said, Burton, you know where I put the armor of God on? If I, if I don't put it on in my prayer, I put it on, he, he, he literally, he says, in the shower. I pray through it. God, help me to have my, my breastplate of righteousness on and, and help me to have a, a, a shield of faith and, and have my feet shod with the preparations of the gospel and have my helmet of salvation and, and have my sword of the Spirit and, my, uh, the, and, and all the things that come along with it, the girdle of truth. I missed that one. Uh, help, me to, help me to, and he praised those things through, but, but he told us what all that was for. And there is a reason God says all of these things in the Bible. If you're tired, sit up on the front of your seat now. Don't miss what God has for you. Uh, I've often bragged about this place being one of the greatest places in the world to preach to after we eat. And now you are starting to look like Arkansas Baptist, amen. <laughs> Don't look like an Arkansas Baptist, man. We're from Philly, amen. And we, 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 got, we, got, we got something to live for. And the Lord's been good to us and we still enjoy him. And so, uh, I hope nobody from Arkansas ever re watches me online and hears me say that stuff. They'll be mad at me. But anyways, I want to, uh, are you whistling? All right, Kara's daughter is whistling. And so, Kara and Miss Lynn's granddaughter is whistling. Me and Brother Cordell back there going, what in the world are we? What? So, anyways, the I learned about this armor, and it helped me helped me a great deal because God wants to help us with it. And, and I may get to the armor today. I've, I've kind of want to, want to get you there. Look at verse number 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The, the word strong means uh, to be enabled. Be enabled in God's power. 
That means that, that we can have God's power. God's an enabler. And God enables us to be able to experience His power. Hey, we're, not, we don't, we're not alone. We're not by ourselves in this thing. There's a lot of Christians who think they're by themselves because they've never experienced God's power and have never gotten close enough to God or followed the instructions of the pastor or what the Bible says to get it. But God is an enabler. God has has, has enabled us so that we to, to help us to be strong in the Lord. And so with the provider of the armor is God. God is going to protect us. And God wants to help his people. And so number one, God enables us. He says, be strong in the Lord. It doesn't say try to be. It doesn't say hopefully you can. It doesn't say you might be. It says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Many Christians walk around without God's power, without God's might, and God wants to be able to hold us up. God wants to be able to strengthen us, and we need that. And we walk around on empty because we're dependent upon ourselves, trying to do it ourselves, and God doesn't want that. And he says, let me be the enabler. Let me be the one that helps you be strong in what I want you to be strong in. So number one, verse number 10, God enables us. He says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Number two, God encourages us. He says, put it on the whole armor that you'll be able to uh, withstand. You, you're not only going to uh, be able to, but I'm going to be able to withstand it. The armor of God, and it is not something physical, it's spiritual. And you will not be broke down if you put it on. I would have had less problems this morning if I had put my armor on, and I'm studying to preach this message and did not get it on correctly. And so I'm no better than anybody else. I'm just being honest with you. God encourages us to do it. Put it on that you may be able. You will. That, that may isn't that you might be. It's not a word like might. It is so you can withstand the devil. Because he is real. And he does want you. And he does hate you. Men, let me tell you something. He hates you. That's what, the, that's what the devil did to the stinking neighborhood. Is he killed all the men. Not, not physically, but spiritually. And now we have a bunch of ladies that are having to be the man. And a lot of folks don't want to, and we got these kids that don't want to do nothing because their daddy never did nothing, and they never seen him do anything, and everybody wants everything handed to them. But man, if we get encouraged by the Lord and get taught by the Lord, God helps us. So he enables us, he encourages us. Look at verse 12. Verse 12, he, he explains it to us. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's what he's saying here. Because... For is because. Because we don't fight against people. People are not the enemy. My wife is not the enemy. The husband is not the enemy. The neighbors are not the enemy. The unbelievers are not the enemy. The president's not the enemy. The government's not the enemy. Your worst nightmare is the person. They're not your enemy. He says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We, 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 the flesh and blood is not the ones that we're, that we're dealing with, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Who's the ruler of the darkness? The devil and its demons. Well, that's what we're up against, especially the local New Testament church. We're doing something, and God wants us to do something that's not going to get done. And a lot of times, you're in your own power, you're not dependent upon the Lord, and you do nothing for God because you're in your own power and you're not strong Lord. If you're strong, don't tell me you're strong in the Lord and you're not doing nothing for the Lord. Because you're not strong in the Lord. And, and you can say, well, you just because you think I ought to do it doesn't mean anything. I know nobody thinks that. But that's not true. We just do what the Bible tells us to do for the most part. I do know we have some traditions in here, man-made traditions. But they're only to hold up the traditions God gave us. 
what God said to do. And so a lot of people, uh, they, they, they get down there. You're not battling against your own flesh and blood. You're battling against the devil, man. He wants to discourage you. He's taken out many men of God with, with different uh, things like uh, wives and kids and sickness and, and health. And, and they never recovered. Because they were not strong in the Lord. A good prayer would just be get down and say, God, I need you to strengthen me. I'm at the end and I need you, Lord. I need you. And God encourages that because we're not fighting against flesh and blood. But against principalities, powers, rulers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That word high means heavenly places. It means the, the, the devil's an accuser of the brethren. He's up there. The Bible says he accuses day and night. He tell, talks to God about us. You see in Job, he talked to God about, uh, about Job. And, and so he's helping us. And this isn't the first time in the letter that Paul explains that there's an unseen war going on. Look at chapter number one. Okay, that sounds like this. Chapter number one, everybody, come on. Wake up. Verse number 21. Far above principality and power and might and dominion. Uh, he, he names, uh, he starts talking about this stuff early on in the book of Ephesians. Look at chapter number 2, verse number 2. Where in a time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Look at chapter number 3, verse number 10. To the intent that now under the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church to the manifold wisdom of God. He's talking about those principalities and powers in heavenly places. Look at chapter 4, verse number 27. Neither give place to the devil. He's warning them the whole book about this. Now look at chapter 5, verse number 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. That, that is people and that is demon people. People that don't care about life. Listen to me. I've said this before. All these problems in America with all these shootings have nothing to do with a little piece of uh, uh, metal that has bullets in it. It has to do with demons. There's no other way to explain a person just goes kills everybody. That's demonic. And, and, and so the, 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 the devil is not, I mean, the, 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 the battle is against the works of darkness, not flesh and blood. Verse, look at 6.12, uh, we, we just, Ephesians 6.12, where we're at. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities and powers, rules of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So he explains it to us. Look at the rest of... Uh, Verse number uh, 11 says uh, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He establishes us. That word stand there means to be established. The word stand there literally means to be concreted in and stuck, established where you cannot be moved. And God can do that with his armor. That we cannot be moved. And, 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 and he wants to, that in verse 13, he states it again, that you may be able to withstand or oppose or resist the evil day, having done all to stand, having done all to be established. The only way to be established, the only way to be concretely put in there with God is through the armor of God. And God wants to do that. When we give our life to Christ, uh, uh, we have not just received eternal life and peace. We received the King of Kings. The benefits that come with it. And we get enlisted in a war, a spiritual war. 2 Timothy 2.4, he says this, No man that warreth and tangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that, may, that he may please him that hath chosen him to be a good soldier. Wake up now! Sit up. <laughs> God wants to, the ones that have fallen asleep are in spiritual war and need to wake up. 
God wants the fellowship of mankind. The devil uh, wants destruction. God wants that fellowship with us. And God can't have fellowship with us if we're not choosing him and getting in his power and getting in his and getting established by him. Then we, we lose the fellowship and the devil wants to destroy everything. The last thing the devil wants are these three boys to turn out to be married to one wife, have kids, and live for the Lord the rest of their life. He'd hate that. And I guarantee he's fighting mama and mama and mama over all of it. Just, just, just after them. And they're in a spiritual war. You know what they got to do? Those ladies got to do? They got to be strong in the Lord. The power of his might. And these boys are learning that too. God wants to help us. And most problems can be solved if we just let the Lord solve them. I may not do much. And I may not uh, uh, be able to stand by myself, but I can stand with God. Amen. And so Jesus, man, he gives us everything and helps us. And so I want to go ahead and get into him. And I, I want you to see this real quick. Look at verse number uh, 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Now, he says to put on the whole armor of God. Put it on, let it sink in, array yourself so you can stand with God, so you can have God. Where He says, wherefore, take the armor, put it on. He says, heaven, stand up for with your loins girt about with truth. I've said this many times, uh, you know, and, and I've, 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 you know, I'm getting older, so it feels like I, you know, I've, I've preached it a couple times here. But as a weightlifter, when you, when you lift weights, you have to put a belt on. And a lot of people think that belt's for your back. Now, I like the way it makes my back feel when I'm lifting heavy weights. But really, it's for my, my the loins. Loins are what's, are what's inside of you. That's your, you, 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 you're inside. And, and, and so you, you, I wrap that belt around me. So when I'm picking that heavy weight up and I'm straining, my stomach doesn't collapse and, put, and, and, and rub, burst out. And so he said, Get the, stand up for having your loins girt about with truth. And, and that's what holds us together. Truth. God's word. Being truthful. He said, look, one of the armors is to say, God, help. I tell God, help my mind to be girt about with truth today. May I live in your truth. What, what I know from the Bible. So I don't know everything in the Bible. Well, guess what? When the Holy Spirit came to live inside of you, you know now what's right and what ain't right. Yeah. He tells you. And, and before the Holy Spirit came, and tell, came into your life, you knew right and wrong. We're built like that. And so he says, put on the truth. Have it and live by what the Word of God says. Not by what you think, not by what they think, not by what anybody else thinks. And, and be girt with it, man. Wrap it around your life. Make it your focal point of your life. Folks, listen to me. If people do that, man, it changes lives. So if you have my problems... No, no, let me say something. If you had my problems, you'd be stuffed. I, I, I got more problems. I'm, I'm just telling you, I carry a lot of weight. I hate hearing that. If you had my problem, no, no, come on now. We've all got enough problems to deal with. Yeah. We've got to have our loins girt about with truth, and we decide that we're going to be, we're going to live for the Lord, and we're going to do it the way God wants it to be done. Having your loins girt about with truth, what God's Word says I'm going to be a truthful man. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to do it the way God wants. And, and brother, we don't always said it. Honesty is not the best policy. Honesty is the only policy. Amen. The only thing we can do is be honest. Or, 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 you know, this world we live in, and not in here, I hope, we, they've taught our kids to just lie. I mean, and it's okay to lie. It's not okay to lie. Lying is a big deal in my house. And sometimes it's like, they're going to the, the electric chair for lying. I mean, we, it's a big deal when you lie. And I have to often give them a chance. I say, did you just lie? And then I'll say, now get it right here, right now, or we're going to have a problem. And man, immediately, thank God, they're like, yeah, I lied. Can we go past that point, and then it's the point of no return. Man, God doesn't want us to lie either. God wants us to live for him. Having your loins girt about with truth, you ought to pray about that. God, help me to be truthful today. Lord, wrap me up in your truth as I get ready to go out. Father, I want to put this armor on, and I pray that you would wrap me up in your truth, Lord. I need that, please. 
And then he says, having a breastplate of righteousness. Now remember Brother Weedo's illustration. He put that catcher's vest on. But a breastplate of righteousness. And first of all, I've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, so I'm made righteous by God. So I ought to live like I've been made righteous by God. I ought to make the right decisions. Uh, because God covers me, and it's a protection that God's given me. Because I have His righteousness, I'm protected by Him. But I also have to make the right decisions and say no to some things. Yeah. And, and just say, you know what? He saved me. He, he, he gave me this breastplate of righteousness, and it protects me. Lord, help me to, help me to think about you saving me today. Help me to live a righteous life for you today, a life that you can be honored by. Have you ever gotten up, asked God to help you, and feel like you made a whole day without one sin? I have. And man, those are awesome days where I'm constantly thinking about it. Man, don't, all right, don't say that. Or, or sometimes if I get so filled with the Spirit, I don't even think the bad thoughts. All right, man, it's like not even a problem. But sometimes, man, when I don't, it's a problem. But just me. Nobody else is the problem. It's always me. And so God says, have your loins girded about with truth, but have on a breastplate of righteousness. Don't fall to this. I pray just like this. Lord, help me to walk past sin. Help me not to take any second looks at women. Help me to make sure my mind stays clear, Lord. My loins are girded about with truth. But Peter talks about having, having your loins girt, also having your mind girt. That, 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 that's the central focus of our life is our mind. What our mind thinks about is who we are. And so having that breastplate of righteousness on will guard us and keep us from falling into sin, but it also lets the world know that we're saved. And, and, and it lets the devil know. And we, we, we have a breastplate of righteousness that we can live by. Then he says this, and having your feet shod with the preparations of the gospel of peace. And I love this one. And I heard a man from Howes Anderson, 2003, preach on this passage. I never knew it. But he said that it's perfect. It's, a, it's an armor. And so wherever my feet go, my feet get, wherever I go, my feet get there first. And so I have my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. When I meet people, it is not long before they know that I am a pastor and a Christian man. I make it known. And you know what that does? That protects me in a lot of different ways. Now, I live in a city that's wholly given to idolatry and Catholicism, so most Catholics aren't real impressed with me being a pastor, and they cuss and drink and da-da-da, and they don't really care, and they think it's okay. But they know. You just think the place where we work out, man, they know I'm a Christian. I introduce me, and I tell them, that's my assistant right there, that's my wife, we love the Lord, and, and that's it, you ought to come. Man, I'm trying to actively get them. But if I get there and I don't tell anybody I'm a Christian, I start hanging out with them, you know what they might think? They, they like to, the people see me, they just want to, they think I'm like a manly man and they want to cuss around me all the time. <laughs> They're like, man, you see that blankety blank, blank, blank. I'm like, oh, why do people want to cuss around me? They probably never cussed a day in their life. I come along, they want to cuss. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. It's like, I'm like this guy that looks like everybody cusses with. And with my feet... Kara cusses a lot because, because of me. When I come around, she starts cussing. And so when you have your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel, it's an armor, man. You're really going to be protected. I tell those guys all the time, when they come to visit, they're scared. Well, you're all right here. Yeah, when you step outside, grab some tracks. Everybody comes by to say, can I give you this? I said, that is right away. They'll leave you alone right away with that. But you know what? It's an armor to have those tracks. It is. I've never had a group of these guys on the corners get mad at me for walking up with the tracks. Yeah. I mean, it's an armor. And, and so if we talk more about the Lord, we'd be a lot more safe. Amen. And, and, and having our feet shot with the preparation of the gospel, and we, ought to, we ought to be ready to give the gospel at all times. Everybody in this room ought to be able to take somebody and lead them to the Lord. Yeah. Like that, that ought to be second nature. You ought to be practicing it. You ought to be thinking about it. Listen to me. 
Nobody taught me how to win someone to Christ. Yeah. I sat in my living room of my house and read those stuff that, that stuff that Paul gave me and sat there and practiced and practiced and practiced until I could tell people about the Lord. And then I'm not knocking me up. I'm just telling you it's not hard. We ought to be able to give the, the gospel to somebody. Lord, help me today to, to talk about Jesus so protect me. Lord, help me to have a, a breastplate of righteousness that I'd walk past sin, that I'd be your man, that I'd live for you today. Help my mind to have truth. God, my loins girt about with truth so I wouldn't fail you and I wouldn't fall and I wouldn't tell lies and I wouldn't be like the world. And, and I want to live for you just like the Bible says I'm to live for you. And it's above all, take the shield of faith. Wherewith, above all, now it's pretty important. All that stuff's good, but you got to have the shield of faith wherewith you may be able to withstand, or may be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. And God, you know, that shield of faith, faith, fear knocked, faith answered, and nobody was there. Yeah. I mean, it's a great illustration. When fear knocks, faith has to answer. And so uh, you, you have that, that shield of faith and the darts, you know, it's, it's like a, it's, it's a big shield. And back in the old days, they'd use these for armor. And when they fire those arrows at them, would fire on them, they'd hit them. They'd, 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 they'd fend themselves off with those, uh, with those shields. He said, that's what our faith has to be. Because the devil's throwing stuff at everybody all the time. Bills, sickness, pain, uh, uh, being tired. I mean, there's so many things we battle. Man, the shield of faith, I can make it. I'll be fine. I, I, I ask God, I'm going to burn the candle on both ends. I want to be, I want to give my life to God so much. I, I just want to work, work, work for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, God, I just need your strength. Could you strengthen me so I wouldn't be tired? Because sometimes I get tired. I just want to lay down. God, could you help me just to forget that and not be tired? Help me, Lord. Hey, God wants us to have faith. When, when things come and you got faith, God's going to take care of it. Most of the stuff you've worried about never happened anyway. Yeah. Every now and then something might come down the pipe, but God's going to be, I got faith to know that God's going to take care of that too. And so you put that on. God, help me have that shield of faith today and be ready to, to put it anywhere, wherever it comes from. The, the, the breastplate of righteousness protects you from the front, but the shield of faith can go anywhere. And so we need that. Help us have a shield of faith that we may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Put them out and take the helmet of salvation. I mean, I like it, the helmet of salvation. Hey, I know I'm saved. God saved me. I'm going to wear that helmet, and I know that really nothing can happen to me. Uh, I, I often think, and I often really do think like this, but I know it's not true. Uh, just thinking recently about Brother Hubert, Pastor Hubert up in uh, Walker Bible Baptist Church up in New York who just had a blood clot go to his heart and kill him, 40, 46 years old or something like that. Just dead, just like that into eternity. And, and I, I, you know, I know he went to heaven, but sometimes I think, man, I, nothing's ever going to happen to me. I, but I feel like that only because I just think God's just going to take care of me no matter what. And God took care of Brother Huber, just took him to heaven. What a blessing for him. Uh, but, but listen to me, the helmet of salvation, I'm saved and I know I'm saved. And, and, and man, I don't battle that. I've not battled that. I mean, I, I might have thought about it a few times when I first got saved because I didn't understand the word of God, but I don't battle it at all now. I know without a shadow of a doubt that I am saved according to the word of God. And, and so that helmet of salvation, be a saved for you, wearing a big old hat. Man, Lord, help me put this helmet of salvation on and be protected by knowing I'm saved. I'll be okay. I got the shield of faith. I got the breastplate of righteousness. I got my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. I got my loins girded about with truth. I got on the breastplate of righteousness. Lord, I'll be okay. God, I need that. Help my mind. That helmet of salvation help my mind. Yeah. It's on my head. It protects my head. It protects my mind. And then the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Got to put that on too. Well, how do we put that on? By reading it. By memorizing it. We got to memorize the Word of God. It's so important. You'll be able to help others especially. I can't tell you how many times someone's asked me for help. And I got nothing. But then all of a sudden here comes a verse. Boom. A verse I didn't even memorize. But I read and God let me give that verse right then. 
Because God enabled me with the Word of God because I do read it. And, 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 and folks, I'm telling you, the weakest Christians in the world are people who don't read the Word of God. Yeah. And they struggle. Listen to me. They struggle. They don't give. They don't do. And they, they don't have no peace. And, and their lives are messed up. And, but they're saved. And I'd much rather have all the peace and the salvation, not just the salvation. And, and so he says, take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I can't emphasize that enough. I could preach all night on that. It's the word of God, man. We need it. Yeah. So all we do is all you do is tell us to read our Bible. Well, as soon as everybody starts reading it, we'll stop saying it. Yeah. I mean, God, God won't tell me to say it no more. See, so you think God tells you to say something? I sure hope so. I sure hope so. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Very important that word in the Spirit. Well, our prayer goes up in this world every day. That has nothing to do with the Spirit, definitely isn't in the Spirit, and doesn't get to the Spirit. Mm. Prayer with all supplication in the Spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. Man, we're to be praying, 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 and then we're praying for each other. And the armor will protect us. Yeah. And so you got to put that armor on. Lord, I pray that day you'd help me to put on the, 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 the have my loins girt about with truth. Pray that I have on the, the breastplate of righteousness. Have my feet shod with the preparations of the gospel. Lord, help me to have that helmet of salvation. Help me to have the shield of faith today, God. Help me to have the, the word of God, uh, the, the sword of God and prayer. And you put all that on just like you would your clothes. And you pray it. You say, well, I don't know how I remember all this. It's just written right here. Amen. Pray it and ask God to help you with it. And, and, and God says you can take it. You can put it on. And, and so a lot of people don't get anywhere because they don't have the armor on. And, and so you ought to put that on. We ought to all today say, you know, I'll put it on every day and see what happens. You know, just like they, these, these businesses, just try it for a month. If you don't want it, we'll give you your money back. Try it. Ask God to help you. Ask God to talk to you. Ask God to do something. Brother Paul, next fellowship Sunday, get everybody some coffee out here. These people look terrible. And so again, we give them a bunch of coffee out here, coffee beans or something. Listen, you need the armor of God. You need coffee. If I was sitting out there, I may not ever look like you guys look. But, but listen to me. Put on the armor of God. You read through it. It's in that warfare prayer I gave you this morning. Yeah. It's in the middle of it. And you, you strengthen it, and you visually, in your mind, put it on. Amen. Just like I told you about it. Visually have it and say, God, I want to live by this today. I need you to strengthen. I want to be in your might, your power, your strength, and can you help me to withstand today? You understand? Because he'll do that. And he promises to do it right here, and the Bible's not a lie. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes without going to sleep. Amen.